Okay, properties of parallelograms. So um, we've got a definition, and I forgot to say what I'm defining, but I'm defining a parallelogram here, okay? And I think you probably already know what it is, but um, here's the definition. It's a quadrilateral, so it has four sides, and um, it's going to have two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, so that was for a parallelogram, right? That definition, okay? So I'm gonna do a definition sketch here. So a definition sketch, I'm gonna draw a quadrilateral and I'm gonna show that the, the opposite sides are gonna be parallel to each other, both sets, both pairs, okay? There's my little definition sketch, okay? Now, there are many things that are true about parallelograms, and that's what we're going to get into with these properties of parallelograms. But first, we have to agree on what exactly a parallelogram is. Okay, so then let's proceed. Uh, first, we've got the parallelogram opposite sides theorem. So, hey, there's a parallelogram, right? That's my definition sketch. So if you have a parallelogram, then the opposite sides of that parallelogram, well, I already know they're parallel, so that doesn't count as a property but they're also going to be congruent, okay? In every parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent. That's the uh, parallelogram opposite sides theorem, okay? All right, the parallelogram opposite angles theorem. So in a parallelogram, the opposite angles are congruent, always, okay? So, um, you know, we've got, in most parallelograms, if it's a rectangle, this would be different. A rectangle is a special type of parallelogram. But in most parallelograms, we've got two acute angles, two obtuse angles. The two acute ones are congruent, the two obtuse ones are congruent, and they're opposite each other anyways, okay? Then we've got the parallelogram consecutive angles theorem. And I wish I didn't draw a, a second um, figure here. I might erase it on the, the notes, but... Um, consecutive angles are like these two. They're next to each other, okay? Now they're not gonna be congruent. Just looking at it, angle A here looks obtuse and angle B looks um, acute. But in a, um, in a parallelogram, they're going to be supplementary. So I can say um, angle A plus angle B, I really should be saying the measure of those angles, but I'm short on space here. They're supplementary, okay? And the same is the reason why, let's look at that. So if I use these as my tracks, and hey, they are, um, they are parallel, right? And then if this is a transversal, hey, these would be consecutive interior angles. And if you remember back, I think chapter three, they're always gonna be supplementary, okay? So that's not the only pair of consecutive interiors. B and C are consecutive. Okay, C and D are next to each other. And then D and A are next to each other as well. I just said D and A. All right, all the consecutive pairs are supplementary, okay? And last but not least, we have the, um, the diagonals theorem for a parallelogram, okay? So in a parallelogram, let's sketch the diagonals. Okay, there's my two diagonals of that um, parallelogram. Um, some people are going to say, oh, they're congruent because we've been saying that kind of thing in these other, um, these other properties, but they're clearly not congruent, right? This diagonal is much longer than AC, so they're not congruent to each other. They're definitely not going to be supplementary because they're not angles, so they can't be supplementary. But what does happen is that they bisect each other, okay? So uh, the longer diagonal is going to cut the shorter one in half, and the shorter one is going to cut the longer one in half. So that happens every time, okay? The diagonals bisect each other. So just put that in words as well. Okay, and everything in this section is going to deal with these properties of, of parallelograms. Okay, that's the only new information. Now we just have to put it to use. So let's try some examples. Okay. 
thing. Sorry, I'll leave that on screen for a minute. All right, so we're gonna solve. That means we're gonna solve for any of the variables, okay? So I'm looking at my situation here. I see, okay, I've got a parallelogram. That's good news. Then I can use any of those properties. And I could say that the opposite angles are congruent, and that's true. So 2x would equal 3y, but then I can't solve that because I've got two variables, okay? So I'm gonna come back to that later. Also, the opposite sides are congruent, so I can say, oh, I can do this, and from this, I'm going to be able to solve for y, right? I can say that 20 equals 3y minus 1, okay? And this says explain, so that just means which property you're using and when. So to write this equation, I used um, the opposite parallelogram, opposite sides theorem, okay? So, hey, I'm just going to do a little definition sketch. You can write out the word parallelogram if you want but that means parallelogram as well, right? This is the parallelogram opposite sides theorem. So I'm just doing a lot of, of, of abbreviating there, okay? And then let's solve this. I'll add one to both sides. And divide by three. Boom, boom goes the dynamite. Um, and then often I see people just leave me with that, but we got to solve for x as well, okay? So I can also say, hey, opposite angles are congruent. So now I'm gonna use a different color here. Well, I'll do this. So I'll say 2x is going to be, actually, I'm gonna run out of space if I do that right there. So I'm gonna do it down here instead. I'm gonna say 2x equals 3y. And I knew that because of the parallelogram opposite angles theorem. Okay, and but now I know that y is seven, so I can substitute that in. So two x equals twenty one, and I'll take half of twenty one, which would be ten point five. or you could just leave it as 21 halves if you wanted to. But there's x and y, okay? All right, let's try next one. Oh, this one, I've got some diagonals. Something I'm definitely gonna use that diagonals theorem. So let's just think about that. I have, look at that, I've got x equals six right off the bat because this diagonal bisects that one. And then y is gonna be 3.5, beautiful. So I can say x equals six, if I have a pen that works, x equals six, and um, y equals 3.5, okay? And for both of those, I'm using the, um, uh, what do we call it, the parallelogram diagonals theorem. That was my explanation there, because those are equations that I wrote, okay? But we still need to find z and w. Well, we can do that with uh, the opposite sides theorem. Those two are congruent. I guess I should put three dashes. I've already used one and two. And then the top and the bottom, four dashes. So I can say that um, using the, I'm just going to give do my little explanation up here, using the parallelogram, opposite sides theorem, I can write two different equations with that. One of them, um, z equals five. These were part of my answer, right? This is part of my answer. And then I can say w minus three equals six. And I just have to add three to both sides. And there we go. Okay. Last but not least, we got this one. So I'm thinking, oh, okay, got a bunch of angles in a parallelogram. The opposite angles are congruent. Wait, I can't solve that though. X minus 12 equals Z. Well, let's go to these two then. Shoot, I can't solve that either. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is to write an equation just using one variable so that I can solve it. Okay, so 
I'm noticing, wait, both of those are written with x's. Those two expressions involve x's. So let's use these two angles. And we can, even though they're not opposite angles, they are consecutive angles, okay? So we can use the parallelogram consecutive angles theorem to say that those two are supplementary. So I can say x minus, whoops, x minus 12 plus x plus 12 is going to equal 180, okay? So here I'll put my explanation above since I didn't leave myself enough space there. This is the parallelogram consecutive angles theorem. Okay, and now this might look like, wait, isn't this just going to add up to zero? Well, negative 12 and positive 12 add up to zero, but x plus x isn't zero, okay? Because x plus x is 2x, and it's true, these just cancel each other out. Those add up to nothing, but I can still solve this. And then some people are going to look at this and say, wait a second, when I divide by 2, I get 90. How could that be? How could x be 90 degrees? This isn't a rectangle. Well, you're right, it's not a rectangle, um, because these angles don't, their measures aren't 90 degrees, right? This one is 90 minus 12 degrees, and this one is 90 plus 12 degrees. Neither of those are 90 degree angles, okay? And then, um, so it might be worth actually just figuring out what they are. So x minus 12, 90 minus 12, is going to be um, 78 degrees, right? And 90 plus 12 is going to give me 102 degrees. Okay, So there are different ways to approach this right now, but I just found the measures of those two angles because I'm going to use the opposite angles. Because I know that, hey, these two are congruent and those two are congruent. So now that I know the measures of the two bottom angles, I can say Z is going to equal 78 degrees. And for the... Yeah, Z equals 78 degrees, and, um, and Y is 102 degrees. Okay, and for both of these, I'm using the uh, opposite angles theorem. Parallelogram, opposite, off screen there. Opposite angles theorem is what I used on those two. Okay, that is the end of the no, it's not the end of the section. There's another page, my bad. Um, okay, so moving on to the last page, um, we're gonna do some stuff on a coordinate grid on an x y axis. Okay. All right, so this is an interesting problem, I think, here. This says three vertices of a parallelogram are w, x, and z. So they're in, and they give the coordinates. Find the coordinates of y, okay? Now the key here, there's actually two different places where you could put a fourth point and create a parallelogram. You could put one somewhere in here somewhere. Okay, just visually, if you look at that somewhere in there, you could make a parallelogram, right? You could also put a point way out here and make a parallelogram. So how do you know where to put it? Well, the key is the name of this because you have to be able to read those. Um, you have If you're going around the outside of the parallelogram, you've got to be able to read them in that order. So, hey, I'm going to start at W. I'm going to go to X next. And then I have to go to Y before I get to Z. So Y has to be on my way to Z over here. So I know Y is gonna be somewhere over here. If I put Y out here, then I'd, I couldn't read it W, X, Y, Z. It'd be W, Y, X, Z, or you know, go the other direction. It wouldn't be the same thing either, okay? So it's gonna be somewhere over here, all right? So I know, hey, W, X is going to be one of my sides because W and X are the first two. So I'm just gonna use a little straight edge. You can freehand it, but there's one of the sides, okay? Um, and then x, y, and then y, z, but also z, w, since it's the last one and the first one, so I'm going to draw that in as well. OK, 
Okay, if you just visualize where the fourth point would be, somewhere in here, those are going to be two of my sides. Okay, and what I'm going to do is use those to my advantage. So I know the opposite sides are going to be parallel. Okay, so hey, the opposite side is going to be parallel, something like that. And it's also going to go through point Z because this is going to be one of the corners. Okay, so I'm going to get a side that looks something like that. And what I'm going to do is use the slope of this line. Okay, now I could find the slope if I wanted to, but I'm not, um, well, I am, I guess, going to find the slope. I'm just going to kind of count the spaces. So I'm going up one, two, three, four, five, and to the left two. I went up five to the left two. So my slope would be negative five halves, but I'm just thinking up five, left two. So that means from here, I'm going to do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five to the left two. And there we go, right? And that should be my fourth point. And you could do the same thing, like going from W to Z. I could go down one to the right, one, two, three, four, five. Down one to the right, five. Down one to the right, five. There we go. Okay? And so this has to be Y. Okay? And you can draw in your other segments just to kind of see if it looks good if it looks like a parallelogram you could also do tests check the slopes of all the sides if you want but all i need is the coordinates here and i can see this is the point two one okay so right below this there's another problem that's very similar you can pause the video and try it out on your own if you like i'm just going to get straight to it so this is W, X, Y, Z again. So I know X is going to have to be on my way to Y, you know, before I hit Z. So going around this way, X is going to be somewhere up here. So then I'm just thinking, oh, well, let's draw on the two sides. So I can see, okay, going from Z to W, I'm going up one, left two. So from Y, I'm going to go up one, left two. Okay, or you could do the same thing here. You can say up three to the right two. If you want up three to the right two, same kind of thing here. So here is point X, and that is the point zero two. Okay, if you sketch in this end, it's looking pretty good, right? It looks like the opposite sides are parallel. Okay. All right, up here, got another problem. So this says find the intersection of the diagonals of the parallelogram. Okay, so um, let, let's just draw those in. Sketch them in. This makes it a little nicer if you use a straight edge, but you can definitely freehand it. Just um, make sure you realize it's not necessarily going to be 100% accurate, especially if you're not using a straight edge. Okay, so. One thing we could do, we could write the equation of this line because we could find the slope and then we have two through points. We could write the equation, do the same thing here. Then we could write a system of equations and solve for x and y and find the intersection. But hey, let's use one of these properties, okay? Because it's gonna make things way easier. What do I know about the diagonals of a parallelogram? Well, I know that they bisect each other. So doesn't that mean that this point is going to be the midpoint of either diagonal? And that's going to make it so much easier, okay? So you could use either diagonal. I'll use BD. Um, so B was negative 1, 3. And D was 1, negative 2. Okay, and I can just find the midpoint here, okay? So I'm going to average my X coordinates. Midpoint, I'm averaging the x coordinates, and you could probably do this in your head, but I'm just going to write it out anyways. And then I'm going to average my y's, 3 and negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to get 0 over 2, and this would be 1 over 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. So I got the point 0, 1 half, and looking at the graph, that looks pretty good, right? That looks like that's where my my intersection is. And you could test it if you had some extra time on it. And the, uh, on a test especially, you might want to test it by finding the midpoint of this, but it, you should get the same ordered pair, okay? So same kind of question right below. Again, you can pause the video if you like. I'm just going to get to it. I like to sketch it first. Coaster here. 
Not measuring anything, just need a straight edge. Okay, and yeah, I'm not gonna bother writing equations of those lines. I'm just gonna use this property to say, oh, okay, it's the midpoint of either of those. I'll find the midpoint of AC this time. So A is negative one, negative one. C is two, two. Okay, so let's try it out. My midpoint. Okay, and averaging the x's, averaging the y's, and they both are the same thing here, right? So I'm going to get 1 half, 1 half. And you could call it 0 0.5, 0 0.5 if you wanted to, but that is the intersection of the two diagonals, and that is the end of the section. Okay, see you next time.